and we're going to talk about praying with passion. Praying with passion. Uh, the definition of passion is doing something with great enthusiasm. That's, that's one of the definitions. Okay, we have a passion for a lot of things. Uh, those who know me know I have a passion right now for motorcycles, and I love to ride. I live to ride. All right? It is doing something with your whole heart. Okay, it's putting your heart into something. Uh, and it's giving 100% to a specific cause or reason. Okay, so when we're thinking about pay, praying for passion, uh, the emphasis in the next two weeks is Friend Day. From here on, it's Friend Day. And once we get through Friend Day, uh, it'll be on our Bible conference. And that's what I'm asking us as a church to do. Let me give you my outline. Number one, praying for personal revival. Okay, these are three things that I believe we need to pray uh, with passion about. All right, praying for personal revival. Number two, praying for lost souls. Praying for lost souls. And I didn't put these in any specific order. Okay, this is just the way the Lord laid it out for me. All right, number three, praying for God's will to be done. Okay, praying for God's will to be done. Let's look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, folks, if is a conditional word, okay? It's a conditional word, if, all right? Uh, if we will obey, if we will pray, okay? If my people who are Christians, who are called by my name, humble themselves, there's just something about humility and prayer that is so important. Okay, when we pray, and, and I know there are a lot of people that can't get down on their knees and pray or can't come to the altar and pray, but just, just the humility, you know, to be humble in spirit in prayer is so important. If my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Folks, I am telling you, we need to seek the face of God. And I know he's invisible. I understand that. But it's not just a phrase, okay? It's, it's intimate time with God. It's some intimate time in his word. The way we get to know God is to know him better, okay? And seek his face. And folks, I'm telling you, his face is always there. His ears are always open. All right, he sees, he hears, he knows, he listens to us. And folks, that's, I don't know about you, but what a great privilege it is to be able to pray, to pray to a God. We're not praying to a statue on a mantle, okay? We're, we're praying for a living God, to a living God. And here's the key, turn from their wicked ways. And again, you know, I know he's talking about Israel generally as a nation. But folks, there is none of us that are perfect. There are none of us that do the right thing every time. And, and that's the key there. And, and here's my point in all this. We cannot have true revival without personal revival. Okay? And man, I'm telling you, God has just, he's been working on me about the last two weeks. Uh, even on my vacation, uh, I, I just spent time in prayer and uh, time with God. You know, just I, I just really, uh, you know, I'm an early riser and Lori is not, okay? And so I had a lot of time uh, to pray and, and to seek God's face. And, and folks, part of that, and, and again, it's not being sinless, okay? We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But it's not making peace with sin. It's not where we won't even admit we have sin. Uh, sometimes it's just an attitude. Sometimes it's just, it, it can be little things, okay? And I'm just telling you, if you get intimate with God, I'm telling you, he will get honest with you. He will get honest with you. I, I, 
found two shortcomings in my life that God has pointed out in the last two weeks, and I'm really, really working on those things and will turn from their way, wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven. That means you will hear from God. Folks, and that's the key. A lot of times we pray and we pray and we pray. We talk and we talk and we talk, and we never, we're never quiet. You have to listen. After you pray, I have learned you need a time of just not saying a word. Don't just say amen and walk away. Meditate with God. Spend time, quiet time with God. I will hear from, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. Folks, God wants to forgive us. God has forgiven us. And I'm telling you, key to revival is the, the uh, forgiveness of God, the forgiveness of God. And, you know, the whole deal, folks, is uh, everything. Just It's like a fire, okay? A fire starts it could be a match, all right? It could be a rock hitting a mower, just a spark, okay? And, and I don't know about you, but I do want God to light the fires of revival in our church. I just want to see. I, I, I haven't been in a revival in a long time. I haven't been, you know, uh, you know seen you know, the power of God like that, and I pray that we would desire that. Forgive us of our sin and heal our land. Folks, our, our land needs healing. Okay, America, America, it needs healing. But folks, I truly believe it's going to have to start in the church house. In the church house. So, personal revival, it's not you and your spouse, it's you. Okay, it's not, okay, let her take care of her deal, and you take care. This is a personal thing. A personal thing. And I want to encourage you to do that. Number two, praying for lost souls. Turn to Romans chapter 10 with me, if you would. Romans 10. Romans 10. Paul is speaking. And folks, we're about to finish up the book of Acts. And his whole life was spreading the gospel to people. Okay, and you know, you can say, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism. Well, folks, God saved you. And I'm telling you, if you're born again, you, you can lead someone to Christ. You really can. And, and it needs, and, and we do. Uh, I, I believe it starts with prayer, okay? I mean, I've had my one on my list. Well, since the first time we, you know, we've canceled two or three times uh, because of COVID, and, and, and you just have to keep praying for that person and keep praying for that person. This is Paul. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they may be saved. Again, Paul was talking about his whole bunch Okay, all the Jews. He wants them all saved. Okay, and again, you know, I want my family, all of my family saved. I want, you know, uh, you know, all. You, you, it can be all encompassing. Okay, but but the, what what we've seen stat after stat after stat, the most effective witnessing is one on one, just you and one person. Okay, nobody else. You don't have to have a group of people. It's just you one-on-one, -on -one. my prayer and my heart's desire, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel's that they may be saved, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They don't understand. And again, I'm going to explain this a little more Sunday, so I'm not going to dwell on this. Okay, head knowledge, that's not going to get you into heaven, folks. All right, it's, it's, it's got to be hard. It's got to know the gospel. It has it's to understand the word. There's two things, all right, that bring salvation, the word of God and the spirit of God. Those two things have to. It's not being religious. Okay, religion doesn't save anyone. We're talking about righteousness. All right? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. And folks, I truly believe, especially with this friend day, uh, I think we will have people that haven't been in church, you know, or haven't grown up in church and been in church. And folks, I'm just telling you, uh, pray, 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 if you would, for them. For Christ is the end of, of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. 
Folks, there's no doubt in my mind, God wants everyone saved. Okay? He knows, and we know it's not going to happen, but we don't know who is and who isn't. Okay? So uh, just, just pray for the lost. And then Romans 9. <clears throat> Romans 9. Verse 1, I tell you the truth in Christ. Why do people say that? Why do people tell you that? Because it's somewhat unbelievable. You, when you have to preface it with that, he is basically saying, I know you're not going to believe this, but I'm telling you the truth. That's what Paul is saying. I am not lying. He gets specific. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. I can't lie about this. I wouldn't lie about this. All right? And for those three statements to be made, this is going to, I mean, this is going to be, a, a, to me, a, a big statement coming, all right? That I have great sorrow and continue grief in my heart. Okay, and folks, the key to answered prayer is what I call burden prayed. See, there's a difference of being burdened with something and bothered by something. You look at things on TV and, and you can look at, you know, uh, you know, just certain things that, that uh, draws your empathy. But, but if we don't like it, what do we do? We just change the channel. Or you can even act, you know, feel like maybe you have a burden for something. But what a true burden is, is you can't get away from it. Okay? You wake up thinking about this person, or you wake up thinking about this person's soul. I mean, when you go to bed, you're, you're praying for that person. And that's what Paul is saying here. Paul is giving us a hint, something that is important to see our prayers answered. Because being bothered by something just means that that could be for a season. But when we start burden praying, I'm just telling you, you get the ear of God. You get the ear of God. And it says, For I wish that I myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren. I know I've read this text to you before, but it always is just totally amazing. I, I just, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that. If you, will, if you would take him literally, it's saying if they all would be safe, I would go to hell. And folks, my goodness. I mean, that that's, that is... That's tough stuff, okay? But what he's relating this to and what he's trying to say is every soul is important to God. And we need to pray, pray. And I know God does it. I understand that. But there's just something about our prayer and, and God listening to our prayer and our crying out, okay? And I'm, I'm talking literally crying, okay? I'm talking... You know, you know, tears, you know, a burden for souls. My countrymen, according to the flesh, who are all who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, giving the law and the service of God and the promises. Okay, he just saying, man, they were God's chosen people, and Jesus was down here. He was here, and they didn't even recognize him when he was here. Okay. For whom the fathers, and from whom, according to the fl flesh, Christ came, who is over all, the eternally blessed God. Amen. Folks, our job is to pray. It is the Holy Spirit's God, job to save. But I am telling you, praying is a key. Burden praying is a key. And we need to be praying for lost souls. The third thing and last praying for God's will to be done. Luke 22. Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 39. And we know what has gone on. Jesus in Luke 22 instituted the Lord's Supper. Uh, you know, the disciples, you know, were arguing over who's the greatest in the kingdom. Uh, you know, Jesus predicted uh, Peter's denial there, and, uh, you know, he was going to the garden and, uh, uh, with his disciples in verse 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, 
as he was accustomed. What, did, what does that tell you, folks? He had a place to pray also. He had a place to pray. That means he, he went there. He knew what it was like. He knew where he was going. That was his uh, place of prayer. As he was, and his disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Enter into temptation. And folks, I'm telling you, even when we pray, we get distracted. Okay? Phones sometimes go off. Uh, calls come in. Uh, Satan, when you really get to praying, I am telling you, burden praying is physical labor. It is physical labor. It is is literally physical labor. And and the whole deal was, folks, this was a time, and Jesus knew it was coming. Okay, we're talking about the trial, and we're talking about the beating, and we're talking about him going to Calvary. It would be like you something is coming up, and you know, let's just say a court date, okay, and and you need support, you need prayer support, you need moral support. You need physical support. You need people there, okay? And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away, and he went down and prayed and said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. And folks, I don't think he was having doubts or second thoughts, okay? I think the human side of him knew what was going to happen, okay? Folks, you have to understand, he was walking to death. Okay, he was on murder's row. Okay, he he was walking when he went to Calvary. He knew what was going to happen, and he knew he was going to die. All right. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And I find in life, folks, my will doesn't always match up with God's will. Okay. And again, I I have no idea. I mean, I am praying praying for Nancy. I am praying for David. But folks, it's not up to me, but it is up to me to pray. Okay? These, these are our family. This is our family. They need us at this time. Not my will, but yours be done. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Folks, God sent an angel. God sent an angel. And folks, I'm just telling you, if you will pray, if you will go to the throne of God, go to the throne of grace, I'm telling you, he will strengthen you. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Now, folks, this is burden praying here. And then his sweat became like great, uh, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And I've heard several commentaries or even you know, doctors, you know, say that to do that, to be in that kind of prayer, it is intense, okay? It, where, where your sweat literally burst uh, veins or ver burst uh, blood vessels or whatever in your head, folks. Now that is serious, serious praying. Verse 45, and when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow, okay? And folks, I, I think this is what Satan does to us, okay? I, I know sometimes I get too comfortable. I really do. I just get too comfortable. Uh, I need to be uncomfortable at times uh, when I'm with God. I, I need to be able to be open and honest with him. I need to listen to his voice, okay? I, I need to... Uh, you know, and, and I, I really think Satan has lured the church. I'm talking the church as a whole, okay? I think he, he has just lured uh, a lot of folks uh, to sleep. And, and I understand they were the disciples. But folks, I'm just, I cannot tell you enough tonight. I cannot even put in the words enough tonight how important prayer is to revival, personal revival and revival in our church. And then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Folks, I'm telling you, um, Satan doesn't want us on our knees. He doesn't want us praying. Okay? Satan doesn't, doesn't want us calling out 
Jesus' name. Okay, Satan doesn't want us praying for the lost. So it's a spiritual battle. Okay, it's a spiritual battle. And uh, I, just, I just pray that uh, even tonight, if, you know, again, if you want to pray, uh, I want you just to come to the microphone and then when, uh, when I feel like everybody uh, has been able and had time to do that, Okay, then, then I'll close us out in prayer. But uh, whatever you want to do, whatever position you want to get in, you know, if you, you're welcome just to sit where you are. If you want to come down front and kneel, whatever you want to do. But I am calling for the church right now uh, for a season of prayer for, for the sick also. I mean, please remember David. Please remember Nancy. But remember Friend Day coming up. Friend Day coming up. Folks, I, I'll, I'll basically end with John 3.16. I will give a simple gospel presentation and just pray uh, that God will take that word and God will save some folks this week. And then pray for our Bible conference. Uh, folks, people are not even doing Bible conferences or revivals anymore. Okay? And so uh, I, I just, we, sent, we have sent out many a, matter of fact, I was at the pastor's conference yesterday, and three of the pastors come up to me and thank me for sending their church our brochure. Three of them come up, and two of the three said, we'll see you at the revival. So, folks, I really believe these next two weeks could be some of the most important weeks in the life of our church. So let's enter into a prayer time. We thank you for joining us this evening here at Rye Hill Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you. And may you continue in prayer during this time with our upcoming revival as well as our friend day this Sunday. We thank God for his many, many blessings that he pours out upon us. And may he receive all the glory and the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.